All right, so continuing on with our uh, business owner's guide to CMMC. So let's talk about scoping. I hear uh, this uh, term getting thrown around. Uh, so can you talk to me a little bit about what that, what that means? Yeah, scoping uh, for the CMMC is what they're really looking at is saying big animal pictures, okay? Where is the important stuff that I want to secure? Okay, if I'm doing drawings, if I have uh, important controlled unclassified information, things about my contract with the defense industry, okay, where is that kept? Is it on every PC in your environment? Probably not, all right? So what they're doing is they're looking at and saying, what's in scope? In other words, where's all that information that I want to control, all right? And, um, and I understand it's not just where is the information, but what has what and who has access to that information exactly so is there anything out there that um, kind of can provide a good guide to help uh, help our listeners try to figure out how to scope their business yeah there's a couple of key documents out there you want to make sure you or your team has out there one of them is done by the cyber ab okay it's actually the cmc assessment scope, there's a level one and a level two, all right? The level two is what we typically use for customers. And it basically says, okay, here's what you want to look for, all right? And here's what you have to provide, all right? And it makes you go through and look at your entire network, okay? The first thing you have to do, you have to know what devices are out there. A lot of customers don't even know what they have. All right, and this is the surprising thing, Ben, is that we could have Windows 7, we could have old Windows systems out there. They are vulnerable, okay? Yes. We wanna make sure we don't put anything important on those systems, okay? So all those systems need to be outside of important information, and therefore they would fall outside of our scope. Got it, okay, and then what about uh, people that have access? I mean, how do they think about that? Well, what they do is they look at it, and when you look at the, the important information, your scope, you say, okay, if this is where all my information is, okay, how does information flow in and out of that scope, okay? That could be systems talking to other systems. It could be people authorized to access those systems, all right? And it's the overall control of that environment, okay? Not just from the IT standpoint, okay? If I have a cleaning crew, can they come in and can they have my CAD drawings, okay? Can they physically pick them up or are they under lock and key? It's a really about securing your environment, okay? And securing this information. Yeah, I, we always use uh, the analogy here about just uh, inside the closed envelope, right? So with, within our system, and again, we, we have the luxury of having a little bit of an advantage because our, our platform is set up as a centralized infrastructure in a, in a private data center, right? Mm -hmm. So all the, the servers and compute and data is all kind of within that closed envelope. And, um, and I think about scoping the same way, right? You know, can you draw a box around it and um, does everything stay in, inside that closed envelope? and put your security around the closed envelope. And if it comes out, you know, what sort of encryption are you using or what sort of security measures are you doing once it leaves that, that closed envelope? Um, so that's kind of how we think about uh, scoping. And then obviously then it's who are, the, who are the people that have access, right? So because they get pulled into scope, right? So as a, as a technology provider for the contractors, um, businesses, we, you know, we then kind of get pulled into to scope as well, you know, through these assessment processes. So it's important to think about, you know, how do you draw your closed envelope? And once data, you know, CUI leaves that envelope, are you, are you, is it leaving in an appropriate way? Um, and can you prove that? and who gets in, like who gets in and who, who's authorized or has the privilege to manage or control the data within that environment and, and how are they now kind of brought into, into right. scope. And I don't think a lot of people are thinking about that latter piece of it. No, so. and at a very high level, it comes down to, I mean, this is not an IT project, okay? It's not a, I need to know every PC and operating system and put it on a piece of paper and show me your network diagram, okay? It comes down to, yes, that's a piece of it. Show me the network. But it's also, hey, you have an HVAC system. What? Yeah, your heating and control. 
okay? Does it have an internet connection? Does it have a phone connection? Can people dial into that system? And is that system connected somehow to your network? Yeah. Well, guess what? Some of the major breaches that have come out have been where they get access. When you peel back, they got in through the heating and ventilation control system. Right. And then from there, got their privileges up and went over to the other networks, yeah. okay? So it's, it's securing your front door and securing your IT, but it's also looking at it and saying, okay, let's, let's sit down and think what all is connected. There are a lot of connections out there.